Hi, we're the Lorcana Twins, and we love Lorcana. And tonight we're going to talk to you about our latest exploits in the set championships for Shimmering Skies. Yes, we did our fifth and final set championship for this season. I mean, we had so much fun. I could have done all eight. You know, I could have done one on every weekend day. But absolutely, we, we figured we'd better draw the line somewhere. And you know, so we're we're leaving it at five this time Cause, around. Because you know, Seattle DLC is coming up, and we will probably just be watching that from afar. We did get off the wait list, but it was very last minute when we did, so we just thought it wasn't logistically going to come together in time, but it would have been a ton of fun, uh, but we're going to have a lot yes. of fun too, watching from I'm, afar, I'm having some fun rooting people on. already just right now, but but yeah, it's going to be a good time watching the stream and see how, seeing how everybody does. But yeah, the set championships have been a lot of fun this time around. They always have been so far. I always look forward to it. And so we are going to get into the last one that we did. And I will move on to my list that I played. I decided to mix it up a bit from what I'd been playing. Like in the first four, I'd played Amber Steel, Emerald Steel, and then uh, I doubled down on that. And then I played an Emerald Amethyst. So for the last one, I wanted to try Mufasa. Really hadn't done that in a tournament setting ever, to my knowledge. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, here's a list. It was very inspired by a person named Robert from... A uh, somewhat local area to us. I played against them when I was on the Emerald Amethyst. Really liked their list, and they said they could share it with me, and I found it online. And so this was almost exactly the list. I only tweaked a couple cards just because I wanted to throw in one scar. Uh, there had been three Hydra instead, uh, but I did put in the one scar just for an alternate type of removal. Uh, but the Hydra came in big, so I definitely would. Uh, I appreciate the three and would go back to that. And then besides that, I threw in one Lady Tremaine, and she did come in pretty big in a couple of the games. So, But yeah, just a quick look at the list. You got Pluto and Mulan in the one-drop spot. Pluto's great for ramping, and Mulan might help you draw off Rapunzel. And there isn't the shift Mulan in this list, uh, but you know, the opponent doesn't know that, so they might have to respect the possibility that you might shift into the Mulan that can triple shot and maybe remove three characters when it challenges. So that's a pretty scary card. So yeah, just leaving them wondering. And then Mother Gothel again comes in damage, so you can draw three off of her if you can heal her with Rapunzel, which is amazing and a, a core draw engine part of the stack. Doc again and Gaston at the three drop slots, those are great for ramping as well. And then Pluto against certain decks, or it's Pongo, excuse me, he can, you know, draw you a card off the top if you just pay two ink, as long as you don't hit the three bra. That's the only non character in this deck is three copies of Bra, which right now for the Diablos that are running around or flying around everywhere, uh, very important to have. And then you have Sisu as well, just a great statted three drop. And then also notable that it can shift into the big Sisu and this deck's playing a couple copies. Rapunzel for the draw, um, the core of the deck too, or you know what it's named after, Mufasa. I mean, you've got to have four of them in here. Very cool card, very fun, and just if you're already ahead, it just puts down so much extra pressure. And then, you know, so you never know what's going to come off the top of your deck when they banish him, and sometimes that can just really kind of cement a game for you, or kind of help you come back if you're behind. Uh, what I really like in this list, the card soldiers, just a great stat line at 5. You know, you get a 5-5 five, five and 2 lore, so that's you can do a lot of nice trading with that, also a lot of nice questing. And then you have four Maui, very good for cleaning up units, getting two for ones, because he usually comes in, gets a trade, and sticks around, and they got to deal with him again. And there were some decent location decks flying around as well, so he was helpful in taking out some libraries and some castles. And then the Hydra again, that was clutch against some steel decks. I know we played a match that he'll talk about later on, where in one of the games the Hydra came in pretty big. I had a couple of them down, and you know against Steel Song that could could be uh, pretty threatening to him. And then the Lady Tremaine, of course, was great to help uh, take out some unexerted characters if you could remove everything else first and kind of force them to get rid of the character you wanted. Peter Pan, he didn't do too much during the tournament for me, but uh, I guess if you're ahead, you know, you can quest evasively for two. And he did eat some removal, so I mean, he, he definitely did threaten the opponents at some times. And then the Surfer Stitch, just one of my favorite cards from set one. And yeah, just drawing two while you're sticking a 4A body on the board, the quest for two, very nice. The Scar, I actually never got to play it because usually the turn I would was going to play it next, I usually either got my hand whole new worlded away and lost him to the discard, or I got him discarded by a discard deck. But I did want him in there just for the chance at cleaning up multiple units in a turn. 
big Sisu, huge against a lot of decks with low willpower character or strength characters, and just a heavy quester in its own right once it's in play. Maleficent, Monstrous Dragon. I also don't think I ever got one of these out in the entire event, but I did like the knowledge that was in there if I ever needed it in the late game. And then one Chernabog. Now he did come in pretty big and just a 9-9 stat line. Sometimes I got to play him for one or even I got to play him for free one time, sometimes for four, but even that feels worth it. And very good against Steel. And lastly, the three copies of Brawl. I was against, you know, a lot of decks where that just felt nice to have early, especially, you know, the discard deck did pop up once, but I ended up getting into a few, you know, various matchups, but was able to pull my way into the top eight, and then I ran into my brother here, who was on Steel Song, and we went to game three, uh, and that is where I ultimately lost, and he continued on, but this was a lot of fun, and yeah, a good change of pace from what I've normally been playing and I think when you, you could get some wide boards with this deck and then the the units themselves are very, you know, pretty well statted compared to some decks. And so leaves your opponent wondering how they're going to remove it all. So. Yeah, I played a Mufasa deck back in set four in Chicago and made day two with it. And I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, just it, it's cool playing a mostly character focused deck that mm -hmm. can really punish people if they don't play around certain things and i especially think the gaston being able to ramp you to a six drop on turn four is one of the most fun you know potentials oh, yeah. that the deck has um and then just like there's many times where mufasa puts into play some big thing that your opponent can't deal with and you know, once you get your stats above him, then it makes your Rapunzel so much better because, you know, you can always value trade something and then heal it off. And then mm -hmm. it's out of range of them again, plus you get additional cards. So I think there's a lot going for a deck like this if you can make it work in the current meta. And the other thing I think is kind of funny to note about this list is it doesn't use any cards from set five. So every card in here is from set four or earlier. So. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting, this is a deck you could have been playing before, but... There are definitely some contenders, you know, the new Vanellope that can rush in as a 3-3 and has evasive when you play her, that'd be good against Diablos, and yep. I know one of our friends at the event also played Mufasa and also top aided, and they had a few of her in there. So yeah, I thought especially if I was against more discard, I, I really would have liked that. And then, yeah, just one last point about the deck, I think in the current meta when you have a lot of the green Ursula trying to steal songs, and you have a lot of peats running around that say you can't play actions like this deck really doesn't care about almost any of that so you know i think that's really refreshing too to play a deck where you don't have to worry about like oh should i hold this song in my hand or ink it if i can you know in case they play that like this just really gets around all that and makes those cards you know less effective for them so very fun and now we will go on to your list and you were actually able to win the event again I did get first. Uh, this is the third time that I played Steel Song uh, out of the five set championships that we did. Um, so I had, I had won first the first time, I got top four the other time. And this time I was able to get first again, so I was really surprised, but it, it went pretty well, I would say. Uh, the only card I changed from the last time was I swapped out one copy of World's Greatest Criminal Mind for one copy of Grab Your Sword, because I know in the previous set championship, I had really struggled against my brother when he was on Emerald Steel, and I didn't like how I had no way in the deck to remove a Prince John unless I had a big Cinderella out and could right. sing a song to like punch into him. Feels bad to and know it, you don't have an It's answer. rare to get to that point in the game against the discard deck because you've probably lost uh, lost most of your cards before you could shift her, or you've lost your Cinderella to some damage, your smaller ones. So ultimately i thought maybe one grab your sword with all the search and wheels that this deck can kind of pull off i thought maybe i would draw into it when i needed it and just it was nice to know it was there um and so for this time around i i did face like three different emerald discard decks in the first five rounds of swiss um my first matchup was a ruby amethyst it, that was really tightly played by the opponent and uh, I, we only actually finished one game. I, I won the first one, it took about 30 minutes, so it was quite a long game there. And then in game two, I was at 17 lore, but we ran out of time. We couldn't, couldn't finish that, so went to turns and I finished with you know close to a win, but didn't have time to see if I could get there. Um, so that was round one. And then round two, I was against the Emerald Steel discard deck, which for some reason, that that just feels like my worst matchup no matter what I'm playing. I, I don't know, I just don't like playing against it, but 
I got to old uh, very effectively by one of my friends there. So from there, I was like hoping I could just turn it around for the day. And uh, then round three, I was against an emerald amber, like aggressive discard deck. So not an under the sea version, uh, but this was more character based with like merfolks and daisies and mm -hmm. then Prince John and Prince John's mirror. Um, but luckily I was able to get some good Rapunzel value on my Smeeze there and kind of keep just enough cards in hand to eventually wipe their board down and then quest for the win. Um, and then match four, I was against another Emerald Amber deck, but this was the Under the Sea type version. And, you know, that one was really close too, uh, but I was able to 2-0 just kind of narrowly get it, keeping enough cards to get the job done. And then for the final round, I played against a Sapphire Amethyst, which is a color pairing I really do enjoy um, using as well. Uh, but I think the Amber Steel is just kind of well positioned in the early game against that deck. And as mm -hmm. long as you can keep their board clear, then they do struggle to come from behind. They so. don't really have many comeback moves like against a wide board. So. Yeah, they got a little better, you know, with the Elsa's, mm -hmm. uh, the Rush Elsa. That really helps out. So, But the nice thing is if you can keep their board clear, she can only come in for two damage. So usually that's not enough to kind of get rid of your threats, especially if you've went pretty wide. And, and then, so that, that was the final round there, made it to top cut, and my brother and I had to play each other right away, Yep. which has happened before. Um, it's always kind of interesting when, you know, when we are forced to knock, one of us has to knock the other out, but... Uh, it's I, all in good fun, so... I had the higher seed going into it, so I got to go first, just based on kind of how our, our store rules were operating that day. And so, you know, that definitely helped. I would say the games where I was on the play felt a lot better than game two, where I was not. And mm -hmm. um, But yeah, so I just I edged him out in game three. It was very well played. And then in the top four match, I was against the Ruby Amethyst, which was also very well played. I dropped the first game... Um, I feel like I maybe made some decisions at the end there that it was kind of a gamble. I decided to whole new world trying to find a Pete because I had enough lore on board to win um, the next turn if I could find one. And I did not find one and I wheeled again on the same turn to look for another Pete and I still didn't find one. So, And then I gave them their Be Prepared and they actually played all four Be Prepareds on me that game. So I just couldn't quite cross the finish line. Uh, but I was able to come back in game two and three and, and take those wins. And then for the final, I was against an Amber Emerald under the sea deck. And game one, I was able to just barely win by milling them out because I counted their cards um, after I had done two whole new worlds and they were on 11 cards left because they had a Diablo down early on when I played the first whole new world and they drew 14 cards with that. So, yeah, it was... Uh, it was pretty interesting that I was able to finish that way because I think my board state had kind of been dealt with um, by Under the Sea a couple turns prior, so not sure if I was going to get there without um, the mill strategy. And then game two, they pulled off the Under the Sea combo twice, so I lost that. And then game three, I just played as aggressively as I could, tried to you know get as much lore before, and then keep their board clear so they couldn't sing Under the Sea. and. Um, so yeah, it, it was a really well fought battle um, from another friend at our locals there, and but oh yeah, he destroyed me in the Swiss, and I even had, you know, Gothel out and got to draw three off Rapunzel, but even so, like my hand was just gone in a couple of turns after that, and yeah, my whole decks. board was sent to the bottom of the deck, and you know, it doesn't even trigger Mufasa when it goes under the sea, so that was that was rough, but. And Amber Emerald definitely experience. feels like it can discard you a lot faster even than Emerald Steel, mm -hmm. just with the You Have Forgotten Me and all this, like, bare necessities plus Sudden Chill. You know, there's so many ways that they can can attack your hand. So kind of just got to play it out as aggressively as you can. And, you know, I, I try not to keep many songs. I like to just draw into them with Ariel and then maybe sing them with a Pete if I play Pete on three just to kind of prevent them. From messing with my board and that was kind of the strategy i was using when i could but yeah really well thought and just barely got it done two to one so it was a great time yeah so the set champs were a lot of fun and i am curious to see now with set six coming up if that will shake up the meta or if a lot of the same decks will persist you know just maybe change a few cards here and there it'll be curious to see i'm sure there will be some net decks that are you know brand new maybe based around some new like the pirate tribal deck might become a big thing. I'm excited to try some new things for sure when Azurite Seas comes out. Yes, and so speaking of set six, we're just going to go over a few cards. 
These were picked earlier in the week. I see there's been a lot of new reveals lately with some really cool legendaries and super rares and other powerful cards of all rarities, but we might touch on you know some of those highlights next week, but we just picked a few for this week. So here we go. This is Grand Councilwoman, Federation Leader. She's a two cost inkable, one strength, three willpower character with one lore. Then she has the ability find it whenever this character quests your other alien characters get plus one lore this turn so i think a lot of times like cards that make other cards worth more lore are pretty good in this game you know it helps you get to your win condition faster i think this one since it's not like just having her in play at all she has to actually quest you can't really surprise your opponent by just dropping one in and then questing for one extra with your aliens you have to you know have her survive a turn on the board but i think just if you're playing her right on curve i mean she's already a good stat line you know for the two costs at least her willpower so she'll probably stick around um at least for a turn and maybe have a one drop alien or you know but it, then there's a question mark like is it more effective or worth it to run her or maybe you know compare it to wendy from a prior set who has two lore and the same stat line you know, Wendy's always going to get you that two lore, whereas this one, unless she's giving something an extra lore, you know, then you're kind of missing out. You could have just played the Wendy, but maybe, you know, you have four alien characters in play and you're getting three extra lore. So, or four, if, you know, you have four besides her. I don't I'm kind of worried she might be a little too slow just because she needs to quest, and this kind of makes me think of that Donald Duck card, um, the three cost bodyguard that gives a free lore when you play it. Um, because, you know, on turn three, you could just play that and give one character an extra lore. And, mm -hmm. you know, because she she is an alien, but she's not giving herself any extra lore. So on turn three, like, the only thing she could really be uh, giving you a lore boost on is your one drop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can think of a one drop for sure alien. You know, Stitch is in Amber as well from set one. So yeah. I could see her working well with, like, a Rockstar Stitch deck, especially since she costs two. So... You know, you could exert her if you have Rockstar Stitch in play to use her as a card draw engine as and well. It's just a similar question to like, you know, would you rather run a Piglet or a Smee if you only had room for both? I mean, Smee always quests for two and has a better stat line, but, you know, Piglet might quest for three, but sometimes Piglet only quests for one. So it's kind of that trade-off. And, you know, if you think you're going to get more value out of this, you know, the, the ceiling is higher, I guess. But, you I know, it I might think her be stats fun too are, It's probably pretty easy to remove this after she does quest for the first time. Yep. Um, so, you know, I think maybe it won't net you a whole lot of value in the long run. But I like that it opens up the possibility of playing a really alien-focused deck. And Yeah, I think if nothing else, that's really cool, like, that you... It gives you a reason to build around the alien. And I type. definitely will be trying her in an aggressive alien build at some point. All right. And then moving on, we have one of my favorite characters, Jim Hawkins, yes, Sailor Specialist. is a five-cost uninkable version of him, and he mm -hmm. has Shift 3. So, And there is recently, I think today, they showed a, a two-cost Jim Hawkins in Steel. So that could be a good shift target for this. Very nice. Uh, but yes, he shifts for three, and he quests for two lore, which is pretty nice. Um, and I like that his five-cost can sing a lot of the popular Steel songs, you know, right. like Grab Your Sword, Whole New World, things it's like just that. just another option of shifting up on three and doing that along came zeus as well and when he enters play you can deal one damage to either a chosen character or a location so mm -hmm. you know if if you just need to ping something for one it's pretty nice that you can do that when he's played um otherwise i think like just shifting him on three it's a really nice stat line for a turn three play mm -hmm. and he's a hero as well so if you're trying to do a hero deck maybe with phil Octides or something like that uh, he could slot in there as well. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I was playing the card soldiers in the Mufasa deck, and that's a 5 for 5-5 five, five and 2 lore. And this one you can get out, you know, on turn 3, potentially. So And interesting to note, uh, even though, you know, he's not a pirate, so there is that Amber Jim that cares about pirates, you know, synergy. And I think Amber Steel could be a good deck for that. But And you could still use this Jim. He just isn't a pirate. So, you know, you wouldn't be able to draw him with the other Jim Hawkins. Yep. And then for the final preview card of the week, we have Peter Pan, Neverland oh, Prankster. Cool yeah. yeah, I think this is has some very interesting implications. So it's a seven cost, inkable, four strength, six willpower character with only one lore, but he's got two abilities. One of them, look innocent. This character enters play exerted. And then the last one, can't take a joke. 
While this character is exerted, each opposing player can't gain lore unless one of their characters has challenged this turn. So that right there, I mean, it blocks off lore from things like the castle, you know, location lore. If people want to play like a goat to try to gain a lore, it also would block that unless that player has challenged one of your characters already during the turn. So again, you can't challenge before your locations would trigger. So it does block those. And then, you know, maybe this is your only exerted character and he's pretty big. So, I mean, if they have to throw something in there, maybe Peter Pan takes him out and then, you know, they'll probably want to really remove this card. Um, and even so, like, I guess if they can remove it with the removal, that would be one way to get around it. But if not, you know, he could be in the right setup, pretty annoying for them to deal with. Now imagine if this was your only character and you were able to give him ward in some way and evasive. You know, there's a location that does that. Could be interesting Ooh, if they yeah. had to remove the location first and then a challenge him. Because challenging, it doesn't count if you're just hitting a location, right? Or does it? Can they attack one of your locations? I think it would count in this case because it just says unless one of your characters has challenged. So, so I think they, you can challenge a location. All right. yes. So you probably don't want to play locations with this Peter Pan, but who knows, you know, there's lots of deck building options. And if nothing else, you know, maybe they have a lot of characters that they, they want to quest with, or at least a couple, but if they have to use some of their, you know, better quest characters to, to do a challenge just so they can quest, it'll slow them down. And I think that's what this card seems to be all about and you know in the right setup it might just lock them out at the end so i think i, I really like how it blocks the you know the location lore gain mm -hmm. that happens at the start of your turn just because if you play this it maybe they thought they were gonna get a win or at least get some lore off what they had in play and if suddenly they don't you know that could really throw a wrench in their plants and then it, it really blocks the location lore every turn until they take this out so mm -hmm. Pretty cool card, I think. I, I do think the seven cost might hurt it a little bit because it does take a while to get to seven. Ink. And it's not a floodborne, so you can't you know shift it up early. And it doesn't quest aggressively, so right. you know, it'll be interesting to see how much play this this Peter Pan gets. But yeah, but it could be unique for like a, an Emerald Control deck of some kind. It would yes. be interesting to see. I would like to see some Emerald Control decks as opposed to the more aggressive. You know, or discard focused ones. Um, it'd be kind of cool to just branch out and see if there's a way that you can build it. Yeah, to be more late game and 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 board focused. So. So that is that, and then we are just on the verge of the Seattle Disney Lorcana Challenge that is this weekend, just in a couple of days here. And we will not be going, like we said earlier, we would love to be, but we are not. But, you know, we are going to be rooting people on from here. We'll be watching with much interest and curious to see what decks can come out on top. I know Emerald Steel has been really popular lately, having won the previous DLC. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm interested to see if uh, Emerald Steel has a lot of success again or if other decks are able to shine. So if you had to guess right now, what deck do you think will get first place? You know, I couldn't even say I'm not going to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... I'm sure I'd be wrong, so... I will just guess that Emerald Seal will take it again. But, you know, I'm not not rooting for that, per se. But, you know, it would not surprise me. I think it's got a lot of great matchups. And sometimes when you just... If you can put together the perfect curve, you know, um, the early game might be just too explosive for them to come back from. Um, so I, th I think... There will be some great pilots playing it again, and I think they'll have a good shot if in the top 64. But um, I guess I'll say I'd like to see a Blue Steel maybe have some That would success. be cool as well. I know a lot of people are down on that deck, and I do think it, it struggles against some matchups for sure, but... I think if built, you know, if built just right and played by a great pilot, I think it could have some really good success in the current meta. So. Yeah, and you know, sometimes that can be pretty good into Emerald Steel, um, as long as you don't have any runaway Diablos or anything like that. Yeah. I think the steel damage and sticking a big board and maybe you know Cogsworth is pretty big against them too. So, yeah, that's a deck I I used to love to play, and I really have I haven't touched it for a while. Um, I don't know, I'm just kind of scared to go back to it because I like to play slightly more aggressive decks um, as opposed to trying to come from behind, which I feel like that deck usually needs to do. But um, but I think it could you know have some success. And yeah, so that, like to that, see that wouldn't surprise me either. It'd be cool to see it break through and win an event. I could also see Ruby Amethyst doing well uh, if, if, mm -hmm. you're, you know, if there's players out there who are pretty effective at 
playing that deck against Green Steel. Um, yeah, I've been hearing reports lately of you know that having some success against Green Steel. If they're good against be... that, then you know that's a good deck against Red Blue, and I know Red Blue is expected to be popular. So I mm -hmm. think Ruby Amethyst could have a decent chance. As long as you know they are, are good into the Emerald Steel matchup, and I think you know Steel Song's always popular, and sometimes that can do decent into the Emerald Steel as well. I think it can go either way. Um, it, it can be rough if the Emerald Steel seals a lot of the songs and you know Pete's at the right moments, but and you know Muses can help bounce characters back. But I do think it does have a decent chance too, especially if it's built in a certain way with some big statue characters. So yeah, it'll, I don't know. I'm just excited to watch and see how it all plays out. And you know, whoever rises to the top, congrats to them. And I'm sure we'll be back here next week to cover that and you know just talk about how it went. Yep. And then we're we're getting really excited for set six, which comes out in about three weeks. So already, it just feels like the time flies. And. Mm -hmm. There's so many decks to try and just not enough time and we're gonna have you know 200 plus more cards to to get excited about here real soon yeah so. i love the theme of azure i'd see so that will be exciting any new set release always is but well thanks for joining yeah. us and we'll be back next week uh and until then happy questing